talk about what your life was like between your first feature and Blue Valentine? Yes, the 12 years. It was a cinematic penance that I was serving. Uh, I felt like I was in the desert. I felt like I was on the bench, uh, you know, watching everyone else play. You know, I, I had written Blue Valentine in 1998, actually started writing it at Sundance uh, when my first film, Brother Tide, was screening. And, uh, uh, you know, at Sundance there was like six people in the audience. When it was all over, there was no one asking me questions about it. Do you know what I mean? It was very clear to me that nothing was going to happen with that film. And so, you know, I remember sitting over the copy machine. You know, this is before you would email a script out. And I would, I, I got like 12 cards from people at Sundance that year. And I printed out 12 copies. And I s signed uh, 12 manila envelopes, you know, 12 stamps, sent them out in the mail. And I was expecting by that summer you know, that I would be shooting this movie, you know what I mean? That I would have like a, a wealth of opportunities, you know, to make this movie and I just got no reaction. Uh, you know, come summertime there was no response at all. I would call the people, no phone call back. So I said, okay, well maybe this is an opportunity to work, you know what I mean, to make it better. So I would re rewrite it and I basically did that process every three months for 12 years. I felt cursed for all those years. Uh, Twelve years later, I feel blessed that I had to wait because uh, you know I needed to uh, you know I, I needed life experience before I could make a film about you know that that was you know that was about life you know in that way that was about marriage you know I wasn't married twelve years ago I am now I didn't have kids twelve years ago I do now you know um, and also as a filmmaker I I kind of was humbled you know I started off my my early films. Uh, extremely, uh, uh, you know, confident. Uh, my, uh, you know, Brother Tide was shot in black and white. It was 50% of it was shot in slow motion. Um, it was like, uh, yeah, I wanted to make the anti-clerks or the anti-Brothers <laughs> McMullen. Um, I wanted to make a movie that was just purely cinematic, you know. But it was, it was content illuminating form. Uh, which is what Phil Solomon, my professor, told me after he saw it. He says, form must illuminate content. And, uh, you know, I started, uh, eventually I started uh, making documentaries. And in documentaries, my image of, uh, of, what a, of a definition of what a filmmaker, of what a director was, changed drastically. Um, I had always had this idea of Cecil B. DeMille is the director. He's the guy with the megaphone and he's pointing. In documentaries, it wasn't like that. That megaphone all of a sudden was turned to my ear and it was a way to funnel in the world. I became a listener as a documentary filmmaker. I would be shooting scenes and they would happen one time. You know, I'd have to sharpen my instincts for real life to know, you know, to capture things that would happen just one time. Um, uh, if I interviewed someone in an interview, they wouldn't answer the question I wouldn't, the way I would necessarily expect that they would, you know. So I had to sh learn to, to listen and learn to tell other people's stories. And, you know, when I finally had the opportunity to make uh, Blue Valentine again, I felt like I was transformed as a filmmaker. And I wanted to find a place where kind of fiction and uh, reality collided and try to find a place where like an actor and a character c collided, you know.